All right, welcome everyone to the Any% Percent Tournament here for Super Metroid, where we have the Losers Final here. It's a best of one race between a couple of runners you may have heard of, some guy, uh, Zosti, and another guy, uh, Oats and Goats, both very accomplished runners. Here with me this evening is Matrix Ugly. How are you doing tonight, Matrix? Doing good, Mook. Been, uh, been coming down with a little bit of a cold the past couple days, but uh, on the mend, and uh, I've got a little bit of Super Metroid to bring in some happiness and cheer. Looking forward to the holidays coming up here as well. I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Um, I'm glad you're here. Sorry to hear you didn't feel well. I understand that all too well. I've got two kids who are sick with uh, RSV, so there's a lot of coughing going on in my house. So this is oh, a pretty excited. exciting race. Yeah, just exciting. Sorry, I'm way too excited. Lots of excitement. The excitement is literally, the tension is is almost uh, ineffable as we look forward to this um, loser's final bracket between Zost and Oates. Um, it's kind of interesting how they both actually ended up in the loser's bracket. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, we're probably expecting the winner of this race to become the favorite in the uh, actual final. We'll see when the runners are starting here. Uh, it should be just a couple seconds. Both runners running Japanese text, so nobody will have a text advantage. Not that that actually exists in this game, but nice to talk about. Yeah, it's a nice tribute to the original creators of the game. So both runners off and going. Um, this is going to be a pretty exciting race in terms of um, the probably the risk that they're both going to take. Um, both runners, obviously, you know, top five, arguably. Um, in the world in just uh, in most categories for Super Metroid um, and definitely for any percent um, so they're not going to be taking any safeties um, both of them are going to be taking the riskiest route um, which is one of the reasons why this has been such an anticipated match is because uh, thus far you generally have runners that uh, are in just a little bit of a lower echelon on and you get a little bit of a different flavor in the race, um, taking different safeties and whatnot. But um, here they're going to pull out all the stops and you won't expect to see in them uh, grab anything. Um, that's going to slow them down. Yeah, I mean, we're talking, I don't think anyone um, other than Behemoth, these two are the only other two runners that I can think of that have got 41s in the game. I know there's a couple guys like getting awful close, but I don't think anyone's hit that threshold. So, I mean, we're talking top three of all time in this category. It's pretty amazing. So both runners will be taking uh, the new route. It's been discovered uh, several years ago now, but um, it is a deviation from the intended uh, boss order to finish this game. So um, it does mean that there's a, a much riskier Fantoon fight. He's the first boss that you go to face and um, they don't have the energy tanks or the suits that uh, they would normally have. So. Uh, and they're both going to be going for very fast kills during that fight uh, with some pretty intricate timing of missile shots and, and all this kind of thing with flames going around. And it's traditionally one of the most dangerous parts of the run. You might see one uh, or both 
potentially die and have to restart. Um, but they're probably going to be going for a quick two round fight and a, and a as fast and risky as they can go. And you'll see them uh, conserving a little bit of health um, up until that point. So both runners picking up Morph Ball and their first missiles. Um, basically, don't be surprised to, to see the, the race be pretty synced, um, possibly up until the moat, which is the uh, body of water that both the runners will have to get across to get to the wrecked ship. Um, but generally, uh, the amount of resets that both of these guys have done going for World records at different points and times has meant a lot of early game practice. So they're making their way up the parlor room here, going to be heading into Bomb Terizo. And it looks like 4.43 and 4.44 bomb times, which is definitely respectable. Uh, you, it's hard to see those kinds of times getting to bomb Teresa. Yeah, the, the effort they make, the like that climb room, really looks just like it's just child's play when I don't think there's anything that gets more resets than that room in this game. Both runners getting pretty good RNG on missile drops uh, during the fight and afterward. So now they'll be making their way over to Green Brinstar, where they're going to do the major, first major uh, sequence break of the game, called the Mock Ball, to get super missiles. And so you'll see that coming up shortly. Now this green pirate room here is one of the rooms that if you watch a lot of runs, you'll know that most old route runners are you know, running the classic intended route. They'll run through those guys, but uh, since these guys are running new route here, they're going to be starting to conserve their health now for Fantoon. And in, so they're conserving now for something that's going to happen in five minutes. So these guys really know how to manage and take care of everything. So there are some uh, micro strats that uh, can happen in part of the route. You'll notice that uh, Oats has two missiles. Um, there is a little bit of RNG that, that can help. Um, they're gonna farm, as you see on Zo's screen, as he's farming that uh, butterfly there. Um, they're hoping for missiles or uh, possibly health. I think missiles are a little more uh, helpful. Uh, Oats getting the rare super drop, that doesn't really happen. Um, but one nice thing is uh, when you get good RNG, you can get up to two missile drops coming up to this point, uh, leaving you with um, nine missiles to go in the Fantoon fight. And when you're not picking up very many items, having those extra missiles can make a difference. Yeah, those missiles, uh, every missile when you go into Fantoon with 10 missiles or 15 missiles is a big deal. Especially and there since are, we're going to have to use Doppler strats. Right, there are ways to farm missiles from Fantoon um, by shooting the flames. 
uh, once his eye opens up. But if you already have enough missiles to do a Doppler, you can go ahead and get that, start your Doppler early, go ahead and farm later. And so, um, you know, they're looking to save seconds wherever they can. Oast with a little bit of a lead be falls into the flower. It's going to allow uh, Oats to catch up just a little bit. Get those wild blooms will get you. And now both runners have their only power bomb pack of the game. So they're coming up to the moat room up in Criteria. They're going to try to get over it with a CWJ continuous wall jump if they can. Um, if they set it up right, they can they can use a backup strat called a horizontal bomb jump, where you expertly time two bombs uh, in, a, in a kind of a diagonal pattern to uh, let you boost across. Zos setting up for his CWJ. Oats missing the initial setup. And Zost getting it. Looks like Oats got the setup for it as well. We'll see if he gets it. No problem. Yeah, that's uh, double frame perfect, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the thing about it is, if you miss that CWJ, you end up in the moat, and that's uh, it's a big time sink, especially when you're. I mean, these guys are running three, four seconds from each other, and I don't expect much separation. Yeah, I just I relearned a little bit about that uh, moat strat. The first jump is pixel and frame perfect to get set up. And then the second jump to do the CWJ is a two frame window. So it's very tight. Um, Zost looks like he has about a four or five second lead, but uh, it essentially doesn't matter at this point because Fantoon is the most random boss in the game. Ghost getting a um, a mid. Oats getting a fast for his first pattern. And it looks like Zos got a fast second round. Missed it. Looks like both runners could be finishing up at the same time. Nope, looks like uh, Oats is going to finish him off first. Zosti taking it safe. Uh, he should finish him this round. And that's going to put Oats in the lead by about 10, or, 10 seconds or so. Yeah, I think Zost just didn't catch the the best RNG there. I think he just didn't get the patterns that are, you know, there's there's a couple pattern combinations that a lot of the runners are more comfortable with, and there's a couple that uh, most runners just don't like. And with that low of ammo, sometimes getting that second round fast is actually a detriment because they haven't had a chance to farm back up their ammo. And uh, Oates telling us before the run that uh, he is rusty and his hands are cold and Zos should take it e easy on him, but uh, I think he might be debating us a little bit because that was a great Fantoon fight. Nice Dopplers. Solid attic room by Oats heading out with uh, seven supers. Zosti, another solid uh, attic room, might be gaining some ground. At this point, both the runners are going to be keeping an eye on their super missile counts as there's uh, some strategic spots to farm along the way. And they're going to want those supers for the Ridley fight. 
uh, they get a maximum of 10. Um, and uh, everyone that you don't have up, up to your max capacity requires a couple more shots on Ridley, taking a little more time. So they'll be hoping for some good RNG and farm spots along the way. But this looks like a pretty good situation for both of them, honestly. Uh, both got seven supers. You know, health is, is decent. Um, much as you can ask for in a race setting and uh it's it's staying very close uh yeah i wouldn't expect either of these runners to have it but if you watch uh some of the newer people who transition over to running new route especially uh Power bomb management coming into this part of the run really starts to uh, become key. So knowing where you can farm those and pick up the one or two extra, which uh, they can try to get through the crabs and uh, the frog here if they really had to. Yep, they're basically going to be looking to uh, open the tube for Meridia. Um, they're not going to go to Meridia, but they're going to uh, crack the glass open so that once they're done with uh, Ridley and Kraid, uh, the glass will be open and uh, and ready to go. It saves a couple seconds. And then uh, they also need uh, just to have enough power bombs um, for lower Norfair. So they'll they'll be making sure that um, I think they want like three by the time they get into the lower Norfair entrance right before the lava dive um, that way they have enough to do their fast pillars and um, or any backups for um, the entrance into wasteland so Picking up the inferior beam, but in this route, it is the superior beam because um, it saves so much time over going crate first that uh, they have to pick up Spazer, um, and it makes the Ridley fight and Mother Brain fights uh, a little bit faster. Slower than Plasma, of course, but uh, they're not going to be heading that way, so they pick up Spazer. And so after high jump boots, they'll be uh, heading into the ice palace to uh, go and grab the ice beam. Again, that's strictly basically for uh, powering up the uh, damage combo on the beam. Um, there's no particular strat that requires them to use ice beam, but uh, every beam upgrade they can get that's, that's kind of on the way. They want to pick it up um, because again, those Ridley and Mother Brain fights uh, are are going to be a lot faster with uh, more powerful beams. I will say ice also allows them to get through Torian. Otherwise, they would have to farm up on power bombs. So this kind of makes true. fast Torian possible. That is true. That is one of the unique things about ice beam uh, as compared to any other beams. It isn't just a damage boost, but... Uh, it does allow you to freeze those Metroids and get through Torian faster. I mean, without testing it, I'd almost say that um, while the damage output increase is nice for ice, I, I don't know if... Because ice is the H, or at least, you know, damage-wise, DPS-wise, is the weaker, weakest beam of the upgrades, and... Uh, 
just I don't know if if you didn't need it to freeze the Metroids if they would uh, take the time to go farm it or to go grab it it's kind of one of those interesting thought problems Runners Although making sure their way up to uh, Bubble Mountain here. Yeah, the the uh, what you're saying there, Mook, is uh, you know the community's been around for for quite a while, and there are some very uh, you know talented people who've been able to crack the game open and and find a lot of strats and things like that. Um, so I'm sure someone here that's a little bit more knowledgeable uh, would know the answer to that, but. Picking up Speed Booster. This is one of the coolest items in the game. Let's you do uh, get, getting blue suit, running fast, and storing up shine sparks, which you can use to get to places that you normally wouldn't be able to. Oats looks like he's uh, picked up just a little bit of the pace here. Now we still might be looking at about an 8 to 10 second difference here. Um, Zosti picking up uh, those wave beam missiles. Uh, they normally wouldn't do that on runs, but having that extra missile pack does give you a little bit of leeway when you're uh, taking care of Mother Brain 1 uh, in case a turret snipes you or, or anything like that. Uh, I kind of like that move for the race setting. Only costs you 6 seconds and uh, basically guarantees you um, with a high degree of confidence to get past Mother Brain 1 and prevent soft locking. And so now they're starting to get to the lava dive going to be doing a trick here called Lava Spark. You get a short charge. It's really tight. You jump, spin jump into the guy that shoots the blue flame. You damage boost off because you saw Oats executing it perfectly. And Zost right behind. I don't know if he's... Oh, yeah, he didn't quite get far enough to the left. So he's going to have to do a, um, do a wall jump in the lava, or gravity jump, rather, to get through there. That's unfortunate. That's going to cost him a little bit. I think the most amazing thing to me about these runners and so demonstrates it there is that without fail, he had that backup plan. He was ready to go as soon as he hit the ground and there was just no delay. And we'll see how it goes in the worst room of the game. Uh, usually these guys get through it no problem, but when things go wrong, they tend to go very wrong. So Ost gets past it no problem. We'll see Zos worst room of the game coming up here pretty quick. Zosti has a couple more supers, it looks like. And uh, I know Zos does a... Uh, kind of a cool farm strat going into Ridley. Um, so I would guess he's going to more than likely be able to get that super count up to 10 uh, by the time he enters Ridley. Yeah, I'd imagine he'll have 10 for the eye door and then 9 going in for sure. Oh, oh. No. Wow. Feels bad, see. man. I didn't even see he was low on health. Yeah, he was uh, in the wasteland with about 62 health. And uh, or once you get to those hoppers, they do 50 damage to you. 
Um, so two hits in there, and it is game over. That is a deceivingly uh, hard uh, place to run. I think what happened there is basically the the side hopper gave him a small hop. There's a, there's some RNG manipulation that you're supposed to be able to do there, and um, the side hopper took a small hop. It only happens about 10% of the time. So he had to react and uh, jump higher over it. Of course, doing that uh, kind of put him in a, a harder position to be able to react to the rest of the side hoppers in that room. And uh, unfortunately, when you're at 62 health and, and you take one hit, that, that gives you no room for error. So that's a really trolly, kind of a really trolly RNG pattern that he got there by the side hopper. That's uh, really unfortunate. I'm really bummed to see that because because um, Oates did have a, a pretty really a solid run up to that point. A great Fantoon fight, um, you know, for the race setting, and uh, and yeah, we had we had a really close good race. Um, Zost, of course, he's he's gonna see that on the the other stream. Probably you know take it safe now um and just finish but it uh wouldn't be unheard of if you know ridley could could have his way here too and uh it could happen at, at any point looks like he does finish okay but um yeah, at this point it looks like he's going to be able to uh put the stops back in take it safe and uh and finish up but that is truly unfortunate uh really sorry to to see that happen to oats um that's a bummer. Yeah, we actually hadn't talked about it. I mean, just kind of being in awe of the runners' movement overall, that everything in Lower Norfair is dangerous, even when you're carrying the gravity suit with its heavy damage reduction. I mean, it still does 50 damage a hit, and it doesn't take much. with the really really nice mock ball there out of the wasteland so these key hunters here that so it's just uh de-boosted through one of them uh the, th the two sets of three key hunters i think are kind of they might as well be an additional boss to the game for the slower and longer escape throughout most of the time. It's, uh, it's, they've got funky patterns and confined spaces and they do 50 damage a piece. So you get kind of trapped in the wrong spot. You take a lot of damage really, really quickly. So here's the, uh, three musketeers, the last set of them. And was, so, was, you know, doing, Zost like things and making it look easy, but uh, I can say from watching enough races that uh, that was not easy and uh, that those two rooms have killed quite a few runs. And there's a nice bounce ball strat from Zost. Yeah, the uh, the Musketeers and uh, those side hoppers both uh, have some weird RNG where you can manipulate them once you get in the room. Uh, just based on your movement, they react even when they're off screen. And uh, I think that's what happened to Oats there. Is he, um, it sounds like he didn't morph uh, right when you enter the room. There's a very specific way that, that you enter in. And uh, if you can enter in the room in that very specific way, morphed and hugging that wall to the left, um, it helps the that first side hopper take a larger jump and just helps you to get a, a little bit more of a consistent setup there. And uh, looks like Oates knew that something went wrong right off the bat 
Um, we'll get more from him after the race, but um, yeah, there's there's a few enemies in this game that um, can just have a little bit of weird RNG that you wouldn't normally expect, uh, and, and other enemies that don't move at all when they're off screen, and, and they behave totally different. There's, there's a definite interesting mix of you know, uh, enemies on global timers and, I guess, local timers. It's a, uh, it's a lot to, it's a lot to remember. Nice crate, quick kill by Zos picking up various suit. And interesting to note that while for various suits only are really picked up in this category simply because the rainbow beam without it will do 600 damage automatically so it's faster to just pick it up than pick up those extra E tanks that it would take. Otherwise gravity could pretty much carry you through 99% of the game. Alright, so now Zos getting through Meridia. I'm gonna take care of Dragon, the last boss in the game. Uh, again, assuming that he, he takes care of business here, uh, he'll be looking forward to a rematch uh, against uh, Kip in the finals. Uh, looks like we got Oats here. Uh, Oats, you there, my man? I was told I could come in since I'm not doing nothing. Feels um, bad, dude. Yeah, but I can kind of compensate with you guys, and we can talk about it after. Um... But yeah, you know, it's just the way Super Metroid goes. Not too worried about it. You go into every match assuming that you can very well die, so. And yeah, I took a little too much damage in Lauren Orfair. Uh, messed up my, my uh, mock ball a little bit, so I was like, well, this is probably the end. Was that in the, uh, what's that room after the worst room? Or did you... Uh, uh, so I took I took 50 theater? damage there because uh, I, I fell. I barely missed the platform. And then I... Uh, so that's 50. And then I took another 40 and 40 from the Wastelands because of a uh, missed Morph Ball. So it's just right. all just mechanical stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, the route you guys are taking, it's, it's not forgiving. So, And most people who've watched this game, they know what Super Metroid... Uh, will do to you. It's a, uh, it's a wreck. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hard game for sure, and we've pushed the limits a lot, so where we kind of need to take these types of risks, um, if we want to beat each other. Like me and Zos were very close that race, and it was looking to be pretty good, but like like I said, it happens, and uh, yeah, we'll see how Zos can finish this one out. Oh, getting an X Factor in a Dragon, and a couple. He's setting up there for a, a, a two potential things I think that can happen, uh, whether Dragon swoops or immediately starts the goop pattern. Uh, he did get the good RNG and was able to uh, finish him off right away. Looks like he got the spike suit as well, which will let him get uh, back across the Colosseum with the stored Shine Spark. Yeah, that spark suit you just saw is very, very difficult. It requires you to unmorph on the frame that you take damage, and then 10 frames after that, you need to press jump again. Um, there are a couple different instances to where it can work, but um, he luckily got the good instance and got the double frame on that. And what's the window on that for when it makes you lose your blue suit? Um, it's just one frame. Um, so if you're a frame late, um, taking damage, you have two frames 
Uh, I think it's like the 10th and the 11th frame. And if you hit jump on the 11th frame, if you're late on the first, you can lose your blue suit. So that's so pretty cool that they're able to get this in the run because it's it's not too forgiving. Yeah, this is something that we practiced um, really, really hard. I'm sure all of us, like when it first came out, because we knew that it would be incredibly hard to do consistently, but we got it to the point to where we can do it uh, within the first two or three tries every time. So we've kind of come a long way since this trick was found in terms of timing. Do you think there's uh, any other, you know, kind of in that same style, uh, similar vein of tricks that seem to be pretty hard, but then uh, you guys manage to get them pretty consistent after a while? Um, It's pretty much everything in the run has kind of been that way to an extent um, to where we've just slightly gotten better and we've raised the bar. So then in our minds, we're... We, we know that we have to outperform what's already been um, like improved or we have to come up with harder strats. So that given enough time over, you know, three years since this route has kind of been a thing has led to, you know, these 41s happening. Um, but as in terms of tricks, um, I don't know if there's any particular trick in this route that compares to I guess the timing of other than possibly CWJ which we can get pretty consistently with CWJ or the bomb jump uh, which is a one frame two frame jump and running the 16 uh, 60 frames per second that's 16.6 milliseconds pretty tight windows but we we have managed to get most of these things pretty consistent Um, another one is probably that I can think of is Lava Spark. It's kind of a tough one that we just need to get now. But these things we've practiced for so long. I think Zos missed his Lava Spark, right? Yeah, he did. He, it looked like he was a pixel off. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw I gained a little bit of time on him there. Um, yeah, those, those tricks are it's pretty tight windows with short charging. Then you have to fall off the platform correctly. Then you have to damage boost correctly. And then after all that, you need to shine spark correctly. So it's kind of tough. But uh, given enough practice and enough time, it's... anything's really achievable in this game, but it's going to keep, the time's going to keep going down, but it's kind of, kind of getting to the point to where we've reached a limit. I think with Zost and Behemoth's time so low. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it kind of looks like, you know, to the point where um, full halfy even seems like you guys have quite a lot of uh, leeway well, with the way that you're doing those wall jumps and um, one of those ones that was thought to be tasks only, but now it, it seems to be one of the less hard tricks uh, to do. Yeah, it's essentially... I, I'm sure we don't even think about it now. It's just muscle memory at this point, like most things. Um, but yeah, full happy used to be one of those hard ones. Uh, but we just practiced it enough, and now I don't even really think about it. It just just comes out. But I know a lot of people have a tough time with that trick at first. Yeah, sorry, Halo, like I'm running the uh, daycare is... center here. Yeah, right. Uh, looks like Zeus got the baby skip, and looks like he's going for Zebatite skip. He was attempting a much harder Zebatite skip, which normally is required for when you do 100% with screw it stack, but they go for it anyways in these runs because it's very slightly faster, which if you can do it, it's worth doing if you can do it consistently. But he messed it up there. I uh, went for a backup strat, got it just fine.
That that is funny that you say the gravity jump, uh, full halfy. That is an actual strat that was used at some point uh, to get the full halfy more consistently. Um, it would be great for game time. It would probably save you a tiny chunk, I'd imagine. So what Zos has to do here is fire 46 shots. Mother Brain will fire her ketchup beam. It's a red orb beam that comes out of her arms. And that will deal a lethal strike if hit after 46. And then it's 46 to 60 with that phase. And then Mother Brain is complete. Looks like he uh, did pick up that extra E tank for safety against the onion rings and the meatballs here. Oh no, yeah, I don't blame him. Um, if I was him, I'd probably save, be grabbing extra E tanks. Missing the dodge, he, or dodging the catch up barely, he was kind of in a bit of a pickle there with a projectile on the ground that he had to jump over and the catch up coming out, but he luckily dodged it. Yeah, a lot of the times you're just struggling to stay alive at the end there, near 46. Yeah, it's, that's kind of a strat, but I never liked that strat because I would get my iframes too quick, the iframes would run out, and then I would take damage from ketchup, so it was kind of a lose-lose whenever I would try that strat, so I just learned how to dodge the ketchup. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, this is probably the longest cutscene in the game. Um, probably the the series to Zebus cutscene is the second after that. But um, just waiting for Mother Brain to uh, kill the baby here, give Samus hyper beam, and then uh, Zosti can get off the planet. Beam, I believe, does sort of a thousand damage per shot. You don't need to charge it. Um, unfortunately, you only get to use it during one fight unless you kind of plan an emulator and cheat your way through it. There is a category to where they do New Game Plus, I believe, and you start with the Hyper Beam, which is I think like 21 minutes long or something. It's kind of kind of interesting. It's kind of fun to blast through the game with one of the most powerful weapons. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of lag reduction. You don't want to be just firing that uh, willy-nilly. Yeah, I'm sure that re requires a lot of uh, uh, strategizing, because this beam is very, very laggy in some some situations. Those looking like he might be at a uh, 42 yet. Yep, he's looking like he's going to get a very nice 42. Uh, probably around a 4240-ish, looking like 4245 possibly, which is a very, very great time. And if he can play like this in the finals, he will have no problem taking it. But as we've seen before against Kip, Kip kind of has that curse apparently, and we'll see if he can win it out. Yeah, we're gonna find for sure because I, uh, I believe uh, if Kip loses, he's in the winners bracket. Never got a chance to go into the losers bracket, so uh, he'll get to try again. 
and uh, that curse only needs to work once. But, yeah. Uh, GG here. Anyway, as I was finishing up with a time of 42, uh, 44. Yes, very, um, very good time from Zost. Very solid for, especially during a race. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, a 42 in a race will probably win you the majority of any match. So good thing I died. I wouldn't want to lose to actual skill, you know. All right, are we gonna get Zost in here? It looks like he's uh, on his way short. <laughs> All right, welcome in, Zost. GG. I think he's playing possum right now. Hello? Hello? Hey, Zo. Hey. Sorry, my uh, the cord on my microphone comes unplugged really easy. Yeah, good, uh, good race, man. Yeah, man, it looked like a really close race. I mean... We were keeping up pace with each other for a while there. Yeah, it was good. You kind of took an early lead. I got a really, really clean Fantoon kill with, uh, mm -hmm. I think, 11.02. And then I saw you kind of struggled a little bit. I don't know if you got enough missiles or not. I just I couldn't time my Dopplers right today for some reason. I, I, uh -huh. I had a practice run before this where I had no problem with Fantoon and then I had a full round this time. But I was really lucky because it's like too fast and too medium or something. So I was really oh, yeah, it was really good. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of took the lead a little bit. Uh, I was playing pretty clean, and then I saw you also hit your head, which also <laughs> yeah. gave me a little bit more of a lead, and then I I made some pretty dumb mistakes, like when you fall before that, uh, the laser beam pirate. Uh, I actually saw that the, happen. In the Everything. rising lava room. So that was mm -hmm. 50, and then I took a couple hits in Wasteland, which, which ended it, but yeah, that was a good race, though. It would have been fun to see if it was play it out but that's kind of the way these things go yeah this is how it goes i mean when but two people like me and you race we got to go all out and so that means we're more liable to die it's just how it is yeah yeah exactly the only thing i was thinking about was grabbing 20 and 10 but that was it yeah same i only grabbed ridley's tank because of what had happened right yeah yeah i don't blame me on that <laughs> yeah you guys did uh keep really uh pretty close pace to each other um, <laughs> through you know halfway to the race so it, it was uh, really entertaining to watch yeah, yeah I, I got CW yeah. I got I got CW Joe's like heck yeah and I looked over and he got to I was like damn right. it man <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was close I messed up the uh, um, I think I had to do the one frame one frame um, oh wow so I was okay really I didn't see that jump but I luckily got it yeah I would be too I mean I was nervous anyway I'm too frame yeah it's just a nervous, I mean, it's just a nerve wracking jump because you know you're going to lose a lot of time if you fail to hit the actual long term. Right, it's like all or nothing at that point. Right. It's got to be different setting up for that, you know, when you're doing runs by yourself a hundred times in a row versus when you're in the race and your opponent, you're watching over and you're trying to see, are they going to hit it too? Well, yeah, you can't reset a race. Yeah, and it's one of those things like you don't want to look, but you also at the same time you're very curious to see like if the other person got the trick, if if you're ahead, if you can breathe a little bit easier. Which yeah. probably isn't very good for a race setting. It's probably better just to play and not look, but it's very hard to not have the stream open and be curious. Right. It's kinda like if you're racing, you know, IRL <laughs> or at a at an event, it's pretty fun to kinda Yeah, it's pretty much just Got a screen a... peek a little bit, yep. All right, well, I think that's uh, that's it for me. Good job again. Well, GG, Oates, if there's any consolation, uh, Zos is going to die two times in a row against Kip, so... Yeah, um, I know. Yep. Kip's I only need to die one time. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I was going right. to say, it only takes once. Just that's right. catch up. Here we come. Yeah, well, no. you guys, I really, really appreciate you being here. Um, 
you know, great race to how things go. Um, thanks to my co-commentator, Mook. Uh, thanks to chat and cheese for restreaming. Um, go ahead and join us this weekend. We're going to have the grand finals uh, round one. Um, I'm not sure what time that is, but I'm sure somebody in chat will be uh, linking the schedule. Uh, so go check that mm -hmm. out. Um, thanks, you guys, and uh, have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.